This is KGW News at 11. We are breaking into your coverage, uh, your, your news coverage now with some breaking news. We're starting the news just a little bit early because we've had some developments we want to let you know about here in the third night of protests in downtown Portland. We do have a curfew in effect, but as you can see, thousands of people downtown near the Justice Center, and we've just learned from police. They tweeted the demonstrators have broken windows in the federal courthouse. They've made entry into the courthouse after a largely peaceful demonstration up until this point. Portland police sound truck advising them to leave the building immediately, advising the crowd to disperse. They have also said to ensure the safety of the staff because there are staff inside the courthouse. They're using riot control agents on the demonstrators who are setting fires in the courthouse. So a lot of developments in just the last few minutes. Let's turn now to Pat Doris, who has been covering this following the protests for us all night. Pat, as you just heard us mention, this has been largely peaceful throughout the day and things just recently took a change. Right. It seemed like the crowd was uh, just sort of drifting away and then all of a sudden came the flashbangs. There had been a couple of fireworks from that area to the left of us. We're now at 4th and Madison because the police had announced everybody needed to move and they started uh, letting go with some of the flashbangs. And people did move uh, ways to the west, but I think now they're circling back behind us and coming right back to the uh, Justice Center again. So um, beginning to you know, get a little bit more tense as far as the police are concerned for sure. And we'll see kind of what happens as this continues to develop. Laurel. And there are thousands of protesters down there. You can see uh, some of them looking to leave here, but we want to get the latest from Art. He's a little ways away from where Pat is. Art, what are you seeing from where you are? Uh, that's right. We're on the south side of everything. Uh, we are at 3rd and Jefferson, and uh, we had been seeing a lot of people leaving, you know, it seemed like leaving the area. Uh, but then all of a sudden we heard the announcement from Portland police saying that they wanted everyone to move west. And initially, people did start moving west to move out of the area. Portland police said, we want, you know, you got to move out of the area, move west, or you'll be subject to arrest if you do not uh, move out of the way. Now, as we see people, they are moving back east on uh, Madison, it looks like. Uh, they're kind of walking east along the side of the, uh, the Justice Center right there. So we don't know what's going to happen because that is not the direction that Portland police asked people to, uh, to move. The other thing that we've seen is that someone has some fireworks out here. Uh, we've seen some of those going off. At one point there was a, lar a loud bang, which was a, a firecracker or something like that. And at that point, Portland police made an, amount, an announcement that said, that was not us. That, one, that loud noise was not us. So at that point, that was a while ago, they wanted to make sure that the crowd realized that Portland police weren't doing anything at all, that it was someone else who was doing that. Again, you know, all of a sudden they made the announcement at about 10 minutes to 11 that everyone needed to leave. They needed to move west away from the courthouse. Uh, they started to do that initially, but now we can see people who are flowing uh, back east on Madison uh, and going that direction, still sort of milling around out here, but there have been uh, no other no other problems and uh, no other announcement. The truck, the the, the vehicle has been making the announcement uh, is about 30 yards behind us, but they uh, have pulled over to the side of the road, just kind of watching everything go on right now. Does it seem like Art that that there are some people that are leaving the area? As you can see, some of the protesters sticking around. You mentioned moving back east. There, does it look like some of that crowd though is starting to disperse and leave, or just come back? Uh, well, you know, before before all this part of it started, it, it seemed like there were a number of people who were leaving the area. Uh, the crowd to us from our vantage point on the south side of it looked like it was getting a little bit smaller. Uh, we had a number of people who were walking south towards us uh, on on uh, third who seemed to be leaving the area. Uh, then all of a sudden police made the announcement for everyone to move west. They started doing that. Now they're moving back east. It's a little bit hard to tell exactly what uh, people are doing and what's happening right now. The crowd ordered to disperse after we heard that windows were broken. Windows were broken at the federal courthouse. And the, the police had originally tweeted that people had entered the courthouse, but now they're saying that uh, demonstrators were not able to enter the courthouse and officers have secured the courthouse. And you can see they're making a, a stand there around the courthouse with uh, with protesters being told to leave. Um, Art, let's talk about how, I mean, you've been following this for hours now. It really was a largely peaceful demonstration as these uh, demonstrators came across the Burnside Bridge from the east side, moved into the west side. Thousands of them gathered at the Justice Center and it was largely peaceful until now. 
Well, it really has been until now. As we watched them, uh, we went down to Burnside and Third as they came across the Burnside Bridge. Uh, we watched them come across the bridge. We heard police make an announcement saying they wanted to protect everyone's First Amendment rights. That how this pro, how people conducted themselves was how things would go tonight. Uh, they made it. They seemed to make it pretty clear that they were willing to allow people to continue to march through Port Portland as long as there were no problems. They came third on uh, down third. They came south on third until they got to uh, the federal courthouse and the justice center. Are are next to one another on on third. Uh, when they got here to that point, that's where they began to gather. It was a massive crowd in the street, uh, in the park across the street from those buildings that was out here. We would hear chants from time to time. We would hear loud cheers from time to time, uh, but there weren't any problems. Uh, then all of a sudden, just a, a little bit before 11 o'clock, we started hearing the announcement over and over and over again that people needed to move west to leave the area, uh, that if they didn't leave, that they would be subject to arrest. So things have been fluid and kind of changing all along, and we've seen that throughout the day, how uh, things have changed. This large group came from uh, the east side of the river and has largely been a, a peaceful group of people who have come over here uh, as demonstrators. Well, we got to say that what Officers people are looking at here, let's listen to this. We'll break into the courthouse. So Please move back they did tell us that they had secured that building and people hadn't broken at that point. But what you're looking at from Sky is a fire. We don't know at this point where that fire is. We'll try to get some information for you. But um, what had been a peaceful demonstration, uh, the vast majority of the people there appeared to be standing in solidarity, demanding justice for George Floyd. But now it has taken a, a, a different turn with the police telling people to disperse. And you can hear that right there in the background. That's what that's saying, especially in that federal courthouse. Let's bring in Pat Doris, who does, has a different perspective, also in downtown. Pat, what are you hearing from the people around you? Because it looked like earlier that the crowds were moving right around you. We'll have to bring Pat in uh, in just a moment. Uh, it sounds like we don't have a connection with him. We're watching the fire burn in Portland on the left side of your screen from Sky 8. We're still trying to determine where that is. On the right side, you see crowds that are being told to disperse from around the federal courthouse where Portland police have said demonstrators broke windows in the courthouse. At first, they thought people had gotten into the courthouse and there were reports on their Twitter feed about fires being set, but now they say it doesn't look like anyone got inside and they've secured that area. But we are watching a fire burn uh, somewhere downtown with Sky 8 above. Uh, we've watched this since um, early this afternoon in, at uh, Laurelhurst Park at six o'clock tonight. There was a big crowd there and they started marching several miles down Burnside, chanting, carrying signs, uh, almost everyone wearing face coverings of some sort. And then they came across the Burnside Bridge where they met police and at first we didn't know and it didn't look as if police would let them cross the bridge, but then they moved, allowed them to cross the bridge. But then we heard an announcement from police saying as long as they remain peaceful, that that would be how the night would go. But uh, once we saw windows broken at the federal courthouse, then the crowd was ordered to disperse. It definitely quickly changed out there in just minutes. And as if you are joining us right now, we are seeing really, I think this is one of the first fires that we've seen of the night, very different from what we saw Friday. And this is a very large group. Uh, it's been different every single night, of course. And tonight it is a very large group of people that are in downtown and trying to stay safe out there as much as possible are our reporters that are staying back from this. So we're trying to bring you a little bit of the view from the ground and from the sky of what is happening right now in the city. And as we mentioned, peaceful for most of the day. Let's check in with Pat. He's ready now. And Pat, you have been following this since protesters crossed over from Laurelhurst. What are you seeing from your viewpoint? It looks like we can see the smoke from that, that fire. Yeah. Um Absolutely. There's been actually a lot of smoke around that elk uh, all day. I think a lot of it was uh, marijuana smoke earlier. I'm not sure exactly what's burning now, but clearly uh, something a little bit hotter. Uh, but when the police did the flash bangs, uh, probably about 5 to 11, everybody flooded out of the area to uh, the west, but then basically hung out for a moment and then poured right back in. So We'll see what the next move is on police. They've been very patient so far, and it seemed like it was working. A lot of people kind of seemed to be sort of trickling out, not everybody, and 
certainly as everybody surged up past us, we saw that the crowd is still quite large, but uh, it's kind of kind of a cat and mouse game a little bit now. Police push, people leave, then they come back and see if the police are going to push again. Are you, you. are you hearing anything from the people that have passed by you? It, it seemed so frantic just moments ago, and now um, people are back to standing in place again. It, it's moving so fluidly. Uh, yes. So I haven't heard a bunch from people coming through. Uh, they were very busy getting out of the way. But, um, you know, you've covered these things. You know that things can change really quickly. And when they do, people have been standing around chatting nicely with their neighbors, all of a sudden turn and run because they don't want to get tear gassed or hit by uh, the flashbangs, that sort of thing. So I think there was a surge of, of adrenaline probably that went through the crowd. And now people are back. Uh, it's hard to tell really whether the mood has changed all that much or not, but we'll see. Hey, describe how that situation changed, Pat, because you've been following this crowd for hours uh, from over in Laurelhurst Park down Burnside, how this development changed things. Well, okay, here comes some police up to the left side there, Mike. So that's federal protective uh, that is the feds. So, I mean, basically, yes, yeah, it's been a peaceful march uh, from the time that we saw folks gathering at Laurelhurst Park, came across the Burnside Bridge into downtown, and uh, we could not see what was happening over at the federal courthouse because we were on the backside of the crowd or what was happening right in front of the Justice Center. But clearly it was something that uh, caught the attention of the police there, and so... Uh, that, you know, definitely changed their outlook on things. And I'm sure it's uh, kind of changed the attitude of some of the protesters, although probably not all. Still a lot of people holding signs and, you know, talking about Black Lives Let Matter and trying to get their main message across. We still haven't uh, seen out on my side here, we haven't seen any um, buildings being damaged or looted or uh, burned as we have seen the last couple of nights. So. You yes. know, it's very fluid indeed, but it's a holding pattern right now, I'd say. Back well, to you. Different, very different from what we saw Friday night. Uh, this crowd seems, for the most part, from what we're seeing from our cameras, calm. They are, aren't dispersing, as they've been told, but they are staying calm. Where Friday night, it was described as chaos. That's the only way you could describe what happened that night. So we, we hope it stays relatively calm, although we, we've heard the reports about the windows being broken at the federal courthouse and now we see this uh, fire from an undetermined location right now. Art Edwards, you were there earlier at the Justice Center when we actually at that point in the day had two separate crowds, one down at Laurelhurst Park and another at the Justice Center and, and that one turned a little bit different. There were some disturbances then. Tell us about that earlier tonight. Uh, you know, the, the police are making their announcements out here, and they're right behind us making the announcement. And the one they've made several times is that uh, they're saying that police are investigating a possible break-in at the courthouse, and they're asking people to move away from the courthouse and back in front of the Justice Center so they can continue their protest. So they're, 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 still, they're still saying, Portland police, that they can continue the protest. They just need to move away from the federal building and go back in front of the Justice Center. Whether or not people are doing that, it, it, we can't really tell, doesn't really look like that. Now, what was going on earlier, of course, we know at 8 o'clock the curfew was supposed to start. So what we saw outside uh, in front of the Justice Center along 3rd and uh, right about Madison and right about Maine is that people knelt down right in front of the Justice Center right at 8 o'clock when the curfew was supposed to start. About 10 minutes later, what we saw were uh, people, somebody was lobbing uh, bottles towards the Justice Center. What Portland police said in a tweet was Officers that... Officers are moving to the Justice Center. Please move your peaceful protest back to the Justice Center. Uh, so you heard him say, move your peaceful protest back to the Justice Center. But what happened earlier is that they were lobbying bottles uh, at the uh, Justice Center, at the officers who were stationed there, the sheriff's deputy stationed there. Uh, Portland police said they were glass bottles. They used gas to move the crowd out of the way, and that crowd dispersed rather quickly officers are moving and left the, the area. Center. Please move your peaceful protest back to the Justice Center. Uh, so they moved there, you know, they moved out of the area really quickly. A lot of people, uh, you know, they uh, got the gas in their eyes. And they were using milk to 
you know, to kind of clean things out, uh, that sort of thing. Then later on, the second group, uh, they made their way across the Burnside Bridge, turned south on third, and that is the group that has been outside of the Justice Center uh, for, oh, probably the last maybe hour or so, uh, maybe, maybe longer than that. They have been out there outside the Justice Center. Uh, now they're being told to go back in front of the Justice Center and you can continue to your protest, but you need to move away from the federal building where uh, they're investigating a possible, a possible break-in at the federal building. All right, Art, we'll check back with you in just a moment. And as police move those crowds, as they said, continue your peaceful protest at the Justice Center. We want to show you now a rare moment in the midst of this very real anger on our Portland streets and across the country. A sign of solidarity between protesters and police. On the third day of protests in Portland, police officers take a knee alongside protesters. It happened just before 2.30 Sunday afternoon as crowds grew outside the Justice Center. That was crazy. This viewer, Ryan, first shared the video with KGW. All of a sudden I see some people hugging a police officer and I'm like, what? So I come running down here to document this and I just was blown away. I think we saw a historic moment. And now... We're seeing what led up to that moment. So, 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 so hey, I feel hey, what you're saying that to hey. me. So, could you take a knee to prove it? Take it me. Could all y'all take one knee to prove it? Take it me. One knee to prove it. We can give y'all what y'all want. We need to take it. Take it. Take it. Give 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 An inspiring and hopeful sign of solidarity on the streets of Portland. Well, now let's go back to our Pat Doris, who is in downtown Portland right now near the Justice Center, where the crowds are right now. But Pat, you spent a majority of the day following these crowds where it started out on the east side at Laurelhurst Park. Well, that's right. And uh, once we got down here to the courthouse, we had a chance to ask some folks kind of why they were here, why it was important for them to devote part of their Sunday to come down and try and make a message. Here's what they had to say. I'm here because everybody matters. We are all the same people. We're all human. We all bleed the same. No one deserves this, especially not George Floyd. He doesn't deserve this at all. We all bleed the same. We are all human. Nobody should, should be treated like this. No, black people can't even walk around, go to the store, hold a cell phone. This is not right. We all need to be stick together and be united. So that was one of the many uh, comments that we heard uh, here. Police have not um, fired off any flashbangs recently, but they have been making those announcements that Art mentioned. They just made another one saying, please move into the park, move in front of the Justice Center. If you don't, we may need to use some uh, dispersal tools, which are the flashbangs and things like that. So uh, we shall see. I don't see a lot of people moving there. Back to you. Well, thank you, Pat. And it does sound like they're going to allow this peaceful assembly, as long as it remains peaceful, to continue. They haven't declared it an unlawful assembly, as they did earlier when some in the crowd began to throw glass water bottles. So they are saying that they, they can stay if they move back to the Justice Center and remain peaceful. We did see from Sky 8, you saw a fire burning nearby. Uh, it looked like it could, have been, could be another dumpster fire like we saw Friday night. It looks like people were throwing things into the fire. Uh, we want to show you what's happening in some other parts of our state, and we'll come back to this in just a moment and also break in if there is a development. But I want to walk you through what we're seeing in other parts of the region today because it's not just in Portland. We start in Eugene, where hundreds gathered this afternoon near the federal courthouse there, demanding justice for George Floyd and calling for changes in the criminal justice system and beyond. So far in Eugene, it's been a peaceful demonstration as well. The city of Eugene does have a curfew in place downtown until 6 in the morning. A curfew is in effect in Seattle as well. Things have been mostly peaceful there today. You might have heard about things yesterday weren't peaceful. Local law enforcement is being supported by the National Guard. 
Tonight, Governor Jay Inslee activated another 600 National Guard members to help police across the state. All lanes of I-5 through downtown Seattle are back open tonight after being closed for more than four hours as protesters march through the downtown core. Meanwhile, Salem police tweeted this about an hour ago, asking residents to avoid the downtown area where several groups of protesters were marching, causing congestion and disturbances. Salem originally imposed a curfew for tonight, but that was canceled. Earlier today, we caught up with African-American business owners and young people to get their feeling on the unrest transpiring. Perspectives are as diverse as each individual we talk to. Morgan Romero brings us their take from Northeast Portland. This has always been a difficult time being black in America. They haven't felt hurt at all. Um, it's the only way they're getting their attention and maybe somebody will listen this time. Uh, if not, don't be surprised if things get out of control even more. Outrage over systemic injustices and racism, deeply rooted in our society, boiling over. Hey, too bad we have fried chicken yet. Stop killing us. Stop murdering us. African Americans and people of all backgrounds are taking to the streets in cities across the country, peacefully protesting. But as we've seen, like here in Portland, many feel that alone isn't enough to be heard and to evoke change. I'd rather it be peaceful, but what is going to enforce change? If we keep walking up and down the street saying peace and uh, no justice, no peace without no action, we're going to get the same continuous reactions. So it is what it is. It's a new generation out here. They're not playing no games. The death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police, one of countless injustices against black people in America. It just makes everybody just more and more fed up. There's nothing new for them and we're tired of it. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Why do we have to prove our humanity to someone? We can think, we can talk, we can act the same as you. We put on our draws the same as the next person, so I don't understand why we're not being seen as that, why we have to fight so hard to be seen as that. It's not, it's not fair. They don't want to see anyone hurt or small businesses to get hit during protests. I don't support the destruction, but I do support the action, the cause behind the action. I don't want no one's businesses destroyed or anything, but it's happened way too often where people, they want their voice heard and they want it heard now. We can fix windows and buildings, but we can't bring back a life. Looking out across the crowds, many rioters aren't black. First of all, it's about time you stood up for us. We've been standing up for y'all our whole life. And it's really nice to see we have some white allies that are like on our side. Unfortunately, a portion of those causing the chaos aren't there for the right reasons and just want to wreak havoc. But the community doesn't want that to overshadow the message they need elevated. We need to get back focused on what we're writing for, who we're writing for, and the rights that we're writing for. Hopefully this is a springboard to change the system from the inside out. If we just come together and we unite as one and we continue to push for a change, that we can make something happen. But I know it's going to take a lot of work because we've been working at this for a very long time. Emotional voices. That was Morgan Romero reporting for us. Now, Portland City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty has shared similar sentiments about the destruction we've seen. Here's her message during a listening session with the Portland Committee on Community Engaged Policing. It was held via Zoom tonight. That the bulk of the destruction that took place was not in black people's name, was not in black people's honor, and was not to support black lives. It was people that decided that this was an opportunity for them to be destructive and to destroy our community. By the way, more than 300 members of our community took part in that virtual listening session tonight. Let's take another look from Sky 8 at 1119 this evening on this third night of protests in Portland, where we have a curfew that went into effect at 8 p.m., the second night of a citywide curfew. And you can see thousands of people did not abide by that curfew and, and came downtown to voice their their outrage about the death of George Floyd and, and the police have tried to respect their First Amendment rights and that's what they're saying as long as they remain peaceful. Um, they are tweeting that projectiles 
are being thrown at officers. That was just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, so far, they're still allowing them to stay, but they are asking people to move west back away from the courthouse and to the Justice Center to continue their peaceful protests. So they have not declared this an unlawful assembly and they haven't asked them to disperse, just to move to the west away from the courthouse and the Justice Center. Let's check back with Art Edwards, who is his nearest crowd to tell us what he's seeing. Art. Yeah, we're, we're on the south side of it. We're at Madison block. I got a little bit closer. It looks like a lot of people have moved out of the street. They were all, oh, most of them were standing in the street uh, between Madison and Maine, and they have moved into the parts that are across the street from the Justice Center and the federal courthouse. Uh, that is moving west, which is what police wanted people to do, although I, I imagine the police were looking for them to move uh, more further west than, than that. So a lot of the people have moved out of the street, but they're all up in the park, it looks like, right now. Uh, we can still hear police making the announcement, probably the announcement they were making on our side just a little while ago on the other side, trying to get people to move away from the federal courthouse and move back in front of uh, the justice continue their protest. Right now, it seems the police are still allowing this to play out. Uh, a specific spot over here, which would be in front of the Justice Center, but they are allowing this to continue to play out. They have said throughout the evening that uh, they would do this. When, when this large group made it across the uh, Burnside Bridge, southwest Portland, they said then uh, that they were uh, going to protect the First Amendment, Amendment rights of everyone. They were making it sound as if they would allow them to protest and to march through the city, uh, but it just needed to remain peaceful. Uh, and as long as that is the case, they seem to be willing to let them stay out here. A large number of them have moved into the parks across the street from the, the federal courthouse and the Justice Center. Still a number of people in the street. We can hear them cheering now uh, and uh, uh, making you know making some noise out here uh, as we continue to watch what people are doing I uh, don't know exactly why they're making noise but uh, they're they're doing that for some reason right now all right art we'll check back with you in just a moment